Go. Tim Burden exhibition. Welcome to the Tim Burden exhibition. We're outside. I've got a couple of friends. It's been the last day of the exhibition. We've seen seagull fights. We've seen people. We've, we've seen Taiwan Fest and puppet shows and paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama Joe's <laughs> World Commonwealth Games Oh bloody hell, this is going to go on forever Anyway, here I got this lovely Oyster Boy and Toxic Boy And I'm going to tell you the story of Oyster Boy Because he's a rather fascinating creature If only there was an oyster I would eat his head But maybe you I will, maybe I won't Start of the story. He proposed in the dunes. They were wed by the sea. Their nine day long honeymoon was on the Isle of Capri. Their supper had one spectacular dish a simmering stew of mollusks, mollusks and fish. And while he savoured the broth louder, while he savoured the broth, her bride's heart made a wish. That wish came true. She gave birth to a baby. But this little one human was human. Well, maybe. Ten fingers, ten toes, he had plumbing inside, he could hear, he could feel, but normal? Not quite. His unnatural birth, this canker, this blight, start in the end of the sum of their plight. She railed at the doctor. He cannot be mine, he smells of the ocean, of seaweed and brine, and my vagina. <laughs> you should cut yourself lucky. Well, last week, I treated a girl with three ears, and a beak. That your son is half oyster, you cannot blame me. Have you ever considered, by chance, a home by the sea? Not knowing what to name him, name him, they just called him Sam. Or sometimes, that thing that looks like a clam. <laughs> Everyone wondered, but no one could tell when young oyster boy would come out of his show. <laughs> when the Thompson quadruplets espied him one day, they called him a bivalve and ran quickly. One spring afternoon, Sam was left in the rain at the southwestern corner of Seaview and Maine. He watched the rain water as it swelled down the drain. His mum on the freeway in the breakdown lane was pounding the dashboard and she couldn't contain the ever-rising grief, frustration and pain. Really, sweetheart, she said, I don't mean to make fun, but something smells fishy and I think it's our son and my vagina. I don't like to say this, but it must be said, you're blaming our son for your problems in bed. He tried salves, he tried ointments that, every, that turned everything red. He had potions and lotions and tincture of lead. He ached and he itched and he twitched and he bled. The doctor diagnosed, I can't be sure, but the cause of the problem may also be the cure. They say oysters improve your sexual powers. Eating your son would help you do it for hours. <laughs> He came on tiptoe, he came on the sly, sweat on his forehead and on his lips. <laughs> Son, are you happy? I don't mean to pry, but do you dream of heaven? Have you ever wanted to die? Sam blinked his eye twice, but made no reply. Dad fingered his knife and loosened his tie. As he picked up his son, Sam dripped down his dripped on his coat. With the shell to his lips, Sam slipped down his throat. They buried him quickly by the sand by the sea. Side a prayer, whipped a tear, and then they were back home by three. A cross of grey driftwood marked Oyster Boy's grave. Words written Sam promised Jesus would save. But his memory was lost in one high tidal wave.